perfect for like long travels. And yeah, yeah. And these are the perfect roads. Nice, you know, not too crowded, not super highway. Well, the, the Lambda finally met uh, the right roads right. that you were made for. Now you get very used to this car, very relaxing, very yeah. nice. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today, a very rare car, a car that was ahead of its time, in its time, 1930 Lancia de Lambda. Uh, this has a V8 engine, uh, which is very unusual for Italy, I think, back in the day. Four liter, narrow angle. I've always been a Lancia fan. I've got an Aurelia. I just think they're just fantastic cars. Sometimes get overlooked by Ferrari and some of the uh, other big names. This car has a rather storied history. My friend Filippo, He's from Italy. He was driving this across the United States. And, you know, an Italian guy just waving and smiling at people all the way. Gets all the way across the United States. He's three miles from the ocean. You're on Sunset Boulevard. You're almost to the coast. And boom, that's where you got nailed, isn't it? That's what happened. Right on Sunset Boulevard. We, we, he was coming to me the next day to film the car. The car was, well, not damaged beyond repair, obviously, but pretty bad. It took this long to get it back together, and let's find out the story. Come on in. Where in Italy are you from? What part? From Milano. From Milano. There you go, yeah. from Milano. Very Italian guy. There you go. Very cool. Well, this is just a beautiful car. And this car, you've traced the history all the way back, right? Been through World War II. I think it was damaged, isn't that what the story Yes, was? the car has been damaged in 1939, while she was in England. And then we lose uh, her tracks uh, until 1970, where somebody found uh, parts of right. this car and rebuilt it uh, in a completely different way. Then when I bought it like five or six years ago, it was very different. Uh, uh, I wanted to make uh, not a restoration, but to repaint it right. and to fix something. Um, and I started, started some researches and I found out that the car was completely different when she was born. Right. So I had to, to do a complete restoration. Was it rebodied in England, or was the chassis sent to England? It was bodied. Was, is this no. the first body yeah. that was yeah. okay? So it was this style. Yes. It was meant to be an English body on an Italian chassis. Yeah. Right, right. from day one. Yes. Okay. Which is unusual, isn't it? It's unusual, but consider that the first owner, uh, who is a, a baronet, uh, mm. uh, he was coming back from a trip uh, in Italy. That was told to me by by the. The, the family. Right. Uh, he really liked Lancia, and so he wanted the Lancia, but to be bodied in England. Right. The strange thing about this car is that you can see it's not completely like uh, uh, British. Right. You can see USA, Great Britain, Italy, because Carlton used to to make bodies for uh, cars from Italy, from, uh, from United Kings, yeah. uh, United Kingdom, and France, and everywhere. And this is quite an advanced car for 1930. It had the V8, which is unusual. That was right. a big engine right. in Italy. Because Italy, anything over two liters, ooh, ooh, that's like a There is a reason. Because Vincenzo Lam uh, Lancia started this, the, the, the Lambda project uh, to make something for the United States market. Then there is a long story, but this failed. They produced uh, just some D Lambdas uh, right. because of this reason. But uh, the concept was for the United States market. And this was a fast car in 1930. I think top speed was about 85, 90 miles an hour. Is that correct? more or less? Yeah, yes. which was which was very fast in 1930. Because yeah. in 1930, don't forget, a Model T topped out at 41 miles an hour, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Model A's weren't much better. You know, speed limit was 40 to 45. So traveling, and you went across the country in it, fine, yeah. didn't you? Until you got to Sunset Boulevard. Ugh. Yes. It's, uh, I can't imagine. How that must have hurt when he got hit on Sunset Boulevard. Yes, but you know, I was so happy that uh, we, we finished our trip uh, and like we did it. And I'm taking this car to a show in a week now. Right. And I knew there was enough time to fix it. And you know, I, I, I restore my cars myself with, with some friends, but right. I know how much time does it take. So yeah. it was okay. And, the worst thing, it was that I promised you to come here, and I, I didn't know how to tell you we had oh, no. an accident. Oh, that was all right. <laughs> I mean, I felt terrible. Man. Oh, my God. Uh, what, just somebody on a cell phone and not paying attention? Yeah. 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 Well, it was a, a tired girl. 
Yeah. Uh, I think he was uh, coming from an hospital, probably a nurse, because she was dressed uh, right. and probably texting. And it happens, you know. Right. Yeah. Now this is a four-speed or three-speed? It's a four. It's a four-speed. Okay. Uh, can we open the hood? Let's take a look. Right. Yeah. Let's open the hood on this side. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because to somebody who didn't know, they would think it was just a big four-cylinder. Right. Yeah. Because it's really a narrow angle. And that's what uh, they were famous for, the narrow angle. They had the V4. Yeah. So this is interesting. And four liter, which is huge by it's huge, yes. by Italian, by Italian standards. It's very smooth. You, you can drive it and... Yeah, yeah. A very nice a carburetor. A little tricky to work on because you've got to take all <laughs> yes. these off too. Then. It's because of the design of the body. Yeah. You don't need to, to work a lot on it. it mm. What am I looking at down there? Is that oil filter? Uh, so this is uh, the oil filter. Yeah, you just turn it and... Right, right, I see. Nice, clean design. Very nice. Thank you. How many did they build with this body? Just Oh, this is a one-off. No, one this body is a one-off. Yeah. A one-off, oh, okay. Carlton bodied some the lambdas, but uh, each one is different, completely different. Right, right. Well, this must have been very expensive back in the I day. I think so. It's interesting, though. It has, uh, we call them cable brakes. Yeah. Mechanical brakes. It's, yes. By cable. 1930, uh, uh, hydraulic brakes were almost just about everywhere. So I'm surprised that they stayed with the cable. Yes, there is. I don't know how, how you, uh, you call it in English. Uh, it has uh, cable brakes, mm -hmm. but uh, there is uh, uh, something that helps uh, to brake. Yeah, yeah, oh, you have a servo, you have yeah. a, a vacuum servo yeah. that helps the pedal brake, right. but there's no fluid. No. In any, yeah, okay. No. Which I kind of, you know, Henry Ford used to say, the safety of steel from pedal to wheel, because they have the mechanic. Right. Yeah, and, and the idea was, what are you going to trust, a, a little piece of copper with fluid in it or a nice piece of steel. What? Are you going to take that steel rod? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And they were pretty maintenance free unless the rod broke or got disconnected. Nothing they, went wrong. They are um, maintenance free. Yeah. Sometimes when I, when I feel that uh, it's losing something, I just uh, you tighten it up again. That's yeah. right. My 32 packet over there, that has a, uh, a vacuum booster on a mechanical brake, and it feels just like a hydraulic brake. It's, 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 you go, wow, right. this, you know, so it's quite And good. if you keep using the car, yeah, uh, it's perfect. Right. Of course, if you, if you store the car for a year and then you want to drive it, you will spend some time just to. Right, right. It does look English. Yeah. It doesn't look Italian really at all. You know, back in the day, you could really tell German from Italian, from French, from. Now everything's kind of homogenized, which is kind of sad. I like the individual sort of look and feel of an automobile. Right. You know, when you look at an American car from the 50s, if you know nothing about cars, you can tell it's American. You know, that's got to yeah. be American. It's right. big, it's loud, it's got right. fins, it's, you know, <laughs> and Italian is go, cool, you know, so, and the French. It's so it's kind of fun. So this is this would be and beautifully made. I love the. Uh, this. Oh, this is Amboina Burl. Yeah. Which, is, which was quite common on uh, um, Bentleys and Rolls Royce. Right. Uh, it's quite rare. And the dashboard is beautiful. Yeah. It's white. Usually it's black on white. This is silver on white with some black, which is... Which yes, is it's actually... So it, it's been the, the most difficult part uh, yeah. to, uh, to be revealed. Uh, so what you see is a, is a solid silver plate, AC etched, and this is, uh, this is ivory. Wow. It was, uh, it was quite tough. Uh, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And let's see what else. Move to the back here. And your spare tire here, and you got a full trunk. Yes. Oh, there we go. You can put a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah. Very nice. OK. I love the dual exhaust. Me too. Yeah, that really makes it with the... Boy, that's really English, the Brooklyn's type silencer. Right. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have seen that in Italy. And the color, very nice. The color, I, th I think the color is so American. Yeah. I, I was going to say British uh, to me. Uh, you know, Rolls-Royce did sand over sable, light gray over blue. Okay. You know, they used to do all that kind of... Yeah, so 
But very nice. Well, you've just done a wonderful job. How badly damaged was it after the accident? Well, so uh, we had to remove uh, um, the skin right. because all the wooden parts, so the wood, the wood body right, right. was broken. Right. And also some mechanical parts got broken because uh, the exhaust uh, was hit. Got but the, the, let's say that the, the most uh, difficult thing to uh, have rebuilt uh, uh, was the wood, uh, wood frame. Yeah, wooden frame. finding somebody can do that is yeah. difficult, yeah. yeah. They did a great job. Yeah, they did a wonderful job. Yes. I, I can't tell. It might even be better, who knows? And this goes ah, like, like this, yes. There we go. So I received it just today. They finished yesterday. Oh, they finished just yesterday? Yes. <laughs> so this would be the first trip, okay. Right. Wow. But you drove it over here, correct? Uh, no, it came okay. uh, by oh. truck, but yes. Oh, okay. It works. All right, so we're going to drive it for the first time. Well, this is fascinating. Okay. After the coast to coast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the windshield opens, which is always great. That's something you, you just can't get in modern cars anymore. Right. It's like going to a hotel. You can't open the window. You're like a fish. You just look outside. <laughs> yes. You know, you can't. You're like, Can I get some fresh air? No, I'm sorry. No fresh air. I'm sorry. You know. Uh, but, you know, it's funny, because when the speed limit was 35 or 40, driving with the windshield open, it's okay. oh, fabulous, right. you know. Yeah, because when, when American convertibles disappeared in the 70s, because the highways, the, you know, the super highways, the speed limit went up to 65, 70, 75, and suddenly being in the convertible was just getting you beat up all the time, you know, so people, right. the, they stopped buying them for a while. But, but then, of course, it came back. Uh, just beautiful. What else is unusual about this? Um, it's obviously body on chassis. There's no monocoque to this. It's no. right, just wood body. Uh, so about the the front suspensions. Uh, sliding pillar. The sliding pillars. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and oh, a curious thing is that uh, this is the first model by Lancia yeah. that has the new design. Uh, okay. And, uh, and you can see also the the front lights. Uh, Vincenzo Lam uh, Vincenzo Lancia was uh, very happy about this new design and he wanted to make the to shape the lights uh, the same right you know this is such style here you know whenever they make replicas of old cars they never get it right because they never have the sense of style of right. the original artist like well, when you look at my Packard you realize the radiator is there to here is the same here to here is the same here right. and, and you see a miniature it's but you have to look it at it goes all together yeah when you see it as a full thing you don't take it all in you yes. know so just beautiful but Thank i have you. to admit this is driving me nuts trying to work on this engine from because you have to get a inside like that yeah i know very cool well just great and of course four wheel drums all the way around yeah which was not a given it was only well up until 23 and 24 some cars still only had rear wheel yes. brakes the, the Lambda came, what, 1928 to about what, 1935, 36? Uh, that was the series? More or less. How many of these did they build? Any idea? So there are like three series and some thousand, like. Oh, that many three, even? Three thousand. Yeah. Wow. But okay. So it was, a, it was a popular car. Was it a popular car in Italy? Uh, it was a luxury car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are tough economic times. The Depression hit Italy pretty hard, yeah, as I remember. And look at, I mean, look at the detail here. Look yeah. at this, just on this little fender light here. And it's got, is that just a reflector? Is that this a This is a, a red light, so yes. you can see uh, yeah. when you drive if yeah. they are turned off or on. Oh, I see. If that's they're great. working or not. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, just beautiful. Which wheels are those? Oh, they are rudged, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, rudged with nice. work. Nicely done. Well, can we take it for a drive? Of course. Let's give it a shot. Hop in. Just jump in, yes, because yeah. uh, yeah. I don't want to step on the. Oh no! And I have yeah, I have soft shoes on. No. No. Okay. So to turn on. You just push, uh, push in, yes, push in. and then. Oh, 
clutch is very nice. No. You drove this cross country from New York to Los New Angeles. New York, yes. What was what was the toughest part of the journey? Crossing the desert, over the mountains, what was the toughest part? No, for me the toughest part of the journey was, was the first days because it was really freezing. Yeah. Uh, we had some uh, issues with the water pump uh, right. and something uh, with the electric system. Uh, so we planned to, to drive uh, during the day and Every time we ended up driving uh, until two in the morning, right? Uh, really freezing and uh, so it was overwhelming. Then when we got to Albuquerque, the the good part started because right. uh, it's warm and and also the the nature is amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, it's funny when people come, like I, I, English people all the time, and when I'm in England, they say. Well, we're going to go to America, rent a car in New York, and maybe take a drive to Los Angeles. I go, do you know how, how far it is? They go, well, <laughs> I mean, how far could it, they go, how far could it be, really? A really long drive, but I'm sure that uh, I will do it uh, every year since yeah. now with a different car and, uh, you know, a different route because the good thing is that you have so, so many ways to cross this country and you see different places, different people. I was... Uh, surprised uh, how people all around the country helped us yeah, yeah. even in New York it looks even, so, even in New York so, I like that you know that in New York everybody seems so unfriendly right but actually they, they really helped a lot yeah well you know it's funny because uh, like young people these two kids call me they go oh Miss Leno would would drive across country in an antique car and if we make it to Los Angeles, can we come by your garage? I, I, I said, yeah, oh, okay. How long you always taking two weeks? Oh, what kind of antique car are you driving? He said, 68 Cadillac. <laughs> I go, it's 68 Cadillac. I said, my father did that every yeah. day. That's not an antique car. I mean, I'm thinking, oh, a Model T or, or something, you know, like this, 1930. I said, I said, it got air conditioning? It got cruise control? It got AM? <laughs> what's, so, so, I said, what's the, what's the adventure? You're just driving a car. You know, like young people, I'm, I'm talking about Italy, but young people uh, don't even think about uh, pre-war cars. No. So even, I, I was, uh, uh, my passion were cars from the 60s and 70s. Right. Uh, but then I started doing some rallies uh, and I was not able to win because of the, of the construction year. You know that you have coefficient. Uh, right, right. And so I started buying, uh, pre-war cars right. uh, and I started liking yeah. pre-war cars. It's something very, very different. The well, feeling, you uh, can look at it and see what's broken. Right. And you can yes. fix it. It's so simple. It's like I always say, mechanical things break, electrical things degrade. So degrade I, and I, you I, cannot see. You cannot see what it is. Right. Yeah. It's funny that this angle V it, I mean, it's such a great motor. It, it's compact and everything. I'm surprised they don't. I'm surprised it didn't last longer. Right. I, I think it's at 32 degrees. It's very, very, very narrow. It's incredible. Yeah. And, you know, many people that come to see the car, 
just tell me, oh, this is a this is a four cylinder. Yeah. Uh, no, can you see the manifold? Oh yes, you're right. But how can it be? expensive to own a car in Italy, isn't it? Yeah. You have a lot of taxes. Uh, yeah. I had a couple of uh, sport cars, uh, but then I sold it because of the taxes and uh, insurance. Right. Yeah. But sometimes you're, you're, you just have passion and you save money and you buy a car. Right. So it's like this. You know, I, I decided to restore this car because uh, I really wanted to participate uh, right, in, a, right. in a good Italian show. Uh, but then the, co the COVID uh, happened uh, yeah. and I wanted to use the car, so I, I participated the Mille Miglia because of that, because yeah. I wanted yeah. to use it. And we have a MS, I have a Bentley, with, we call them suicide door. Yeah. So one day I'm yeah. going along like this and I see the doors, I'm like, oh, let me shut it. <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> You know, I, it, the wind, it's written. I can't hold on, it's pulling me out of the car. Yes, this so is I, the I, suicide. I, yeah, I just had to step on the brake and slow down. And, right. But at 30 miles an hour, it's like 10 men are pulling on, oh man. It's like a sail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We are almost in the desert. Yeah, well, you are in the desert. All of Southern yeah. California is the desert. It's funny, when you watch movies shot in L.A., yeah. At nighttime, they put in the sounds of crickets and, you know, yeah. you know, at nighttime. But there's none of that because it's a desert. There's no bugs here. Right, nothing. Very smooth motor. Yeah. It's perfect for, like, long travels. And yeah, yeah. And these are the perfect roads. Nice, you know, not too crowded, not super highway. Well, the, the Lambda finally met uh, the right roads. Right. You were made. I bet the coach body costs as much as the whole chassis with the engine, doesn't it? Pardon? I, I mean, the coach body yeah. probably costs more than the chassis and the engine, I think didn't so. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could almost add another gear to this thing. It would, still, it would still pull it. Yeah. Could you put an overdrive unit no. on? No, you couldn't. No. Is this 12 volt or 6 volt? It's uh, 12. 12 volt. And uh, it has, uh, the car has two places to put two six volt batteries. Uh, right. But I'm working with one 12. Yeah. I like those Optimus because they don't leak. All right. There's no, there's yes. no gas, yeah, all sealed, you know. I was uh, like, how do you say, maniac? Maniac about Yeah. So like on the Astura, I, I was looking for the, the right battery. Uh, right. Looking. Uh, right. But it, 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 it doesn't last uh, two or three no, months. No, no, that's right. And, you know, like, I think my next project... Uh, what do you think? Won't, won't be about a restoration. I want to build uh, a car based on, a, on, a, on an existing chassis and engine. A preservation. Uh, no, I, I want to make, to design oh, a I car see. and to make it. Oh, I see, yeah, uh, yeah. To build it. Let's see. Well, that engine just hums along, doesn't it? Very nice. Oh, you get very used to this car. Very relaxing. Very yes. nice. Every time uh, I want to use it, uh, no problem. You just turn it on. Yeah, it goes. Yeah. When you did the cross-country trip in this, was the top mostly down or mostly up? Oh uh, no, mostly up. Because uh, it's winter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, because the first part was winter. Yeah. And then in the desert it was yeah. too hot right. to keep it open right, so, right. because of the sun. Would you prefer to have the closed version of this car or the roof of the convertible? I like that you can uh, open it so right, vertical, yeah. but uh, you know, like in the evening you can you can right. open the top uh, and it's nice, but during the day it's way too yeah, hot. Too hot yeah. Well, I'm glad we finally got to do this. I felt so bad after that accident last time. I, I felt so bad because, like, I know that uh, 
No, it's nothing for me. That's so fine. I just because you're here in a foreign country and you don't know who's going to fix it and you don't know. You know when you when you crash an old car near your garage. Okay, you drag it home. You know to be so far away. So I'm glad it all worked out, my friend. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for bringing this piece of history. It's, it's not you. something we see in America, especially a one-off like this. So. I hope more Americans get a chance to see this car. Because you do all the shows, you go to Pebble Beach and everything, so people will see you around. So thank you, my friend. Thanks to you. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>